In the video I made on binary, I explained why it is that computers use ones and zeros to think. The ones and zeros represent the state of a single electrical cell inside the computer, which can be one of two states. But is this the only way of doing it, or are there other options that let us work with more than just two states? Well, actually, yes, there are. And in the early years of computer engineering, people experimented with computers that could use base 3, base 8, base 10, and even base 16. So why were these methods abandoned in favor of binary? If you want to know, then this video is just for you. So to clarify one thing, when we refer to a transistor being on or off, what we really mean is that it's either a high charge or low charge, respectively. An on cell has a very high amount of electricity stored in it, or moving through it, while an off cell has a low amount. These states determine whether or not a single cell represents a zero or a one in our binary code. So if a computer can read and write data to these cells by sensing or storing different amounts of electrical charge in each one, why can't we get more specific with them? What if, instead of less than 50% charge being a zero and above 50% charge being a one, we divided it into four segments, like this? Now, zero to 25% charge could be a zero, 25 to 50% could be a one, 50 to 75% could be a two, and 75 to 100% could be a three. With this method, each individual cell could have four states, meaning that each byte of data could be a number designed around base four instead of around base two. Where a byte of eight transistors could have 256 values with base two, our new system could let us have 65,536 values with base four. Way better, right? Better yet, what if each cell could represent eight or 10 or 16 different states by making the bit even more precise? Well, as mentioned above, these methods were experimented with. The amount of states a single cell of information can hold is referred to as a logic level. Binary is called two-level logic, and the one I just described would be known as four-level logic. The fundamental problem with using logic levels greater than two to represent numbers is reliability. While computers are really good at storing and reading the electricity in each cell, the exact voltage tends to fluctuate a little bit. Take a look here. The sort of natural fluctuation of electricity means that the level of voltage in this cell of data wobbles off by, let's say, 20 percentage points. Even if things get really bad, like 40% off, we have a lot of leeway on either side. For an on state, we try to keep it at 100%, but if it falls every now and then, it's still above 50% and remains interpreted as a one. But in our method of splitting into fourths, even the natural fluctuation of 20% gets dangerously close to crossing the line. And the higher the amount of states in each cell, the more specific this voltage has to be. And by extension, the more likely it is to be wrong. It's especially difficult to try to balance the voltage in the middle where it can't be too high or too low. When we only have two states, for off we can keep it as low as possible, and for high we can keep it as high as possible. We don't really have to worry about overshooting in either direction. This is the primary reason we settled on base 2. If a single unit of information is wrong, then the entire number represented by the byte is wrong. And if your byte is wrong, the data is wrong, your code won't work, and your instructions will be misread. Everything just falls apart. It only takes one bit of data being wrong for this to happen, making any advantage gained by having larger numbers useless. So reliability is of the utmost importance here. Another issue that comes up with having these in-between states is something known as the rising edge and falling edge problem. If we have our four state cell here set to high voltage and we need to rewrite it to be low voltage, we can lower it, but it runs the risk of briefly crossing over the middle two states. Even if this only happens for a fraction of a second, it can cause big issues for running a program. With our two state system, it's either one or the other, we don't have this problem. So to summarize, with something as tiny and simple as a single cell of data, you don't want to overload it with tasks. It's easy for them to keep track of, I have a lot, or I have very little, but it's hard for them to keep track of, I have some, or I have slightly more than that. Now there are a few other interesting facts about all this. With most computers, a high charge represents a one and a low charge represents a zero, and this is what's known as an active high signal system. However, some systems use the opposite, where the low charge represents a one and a high charge represents a zero. This is referred to as an active low signal system. 
Another interesting fact is that there are some storage devices, usually solid state external flash drives, that do use the base 4, 8, and 16 methods described earlier. When this data is put into the computer, however, it has to convert back into binary for the computer to understand. There's quite a few reasons it's okay to do this in flash drives, but not in computers, and if you're interested, you can let me know in the comments or by liking, subscribing, and sharing. As always, I hope I helped, and thanks for watching.